typical Kiwi kid. Outdoors a lot in summer. Didn't get burnt from the sun too much, I think. There was a couple of times where you definitely know about it as a kid and you, you get the lecture from mum, you know, why didn't you wear sunscreen? I'm like, yeah, I know, I should have. She's like, yeah, now it hurts, doesn't it? I'm like, yes. It was in 2012 that I first had some symptoms of what was going to happen to me. I, I had a, a gland on my neck and so I went to the doctor and she goes, okay, well we have to start testing a bit more invasively. And I said, what for? And she said, oh, it could be anything. She said, it could be cancer. I mean, it's a weird thing to hear someone talking about your health or your well-being or your life and then in the same sentence saying the word cancer and that's a very odd conversation to have with someone. Mark, my doctor, told me, I think the exact words were something like, you're young, we'll get you through this, don't worry about it, I'm going to make sure you get through this. He said, I'm going to make it my mission to get you through this. It's pretty late on a Friday afternoon consulting and this young guy came into the clinic with clearly a pretty big problem. First thing you notice about Mike is his personality, but you know, there's some things that when you see them for the first time you know instantly that it's not good. Between diagnosis and surgery, the glands had grown so big, and I mean big, I'm talking like the size of a baseball, and that's all I thought there was to it, but when Mark and his team performed surgery on me, they found out that it was actually the size of my arm, and going from there, and then twisting around and touching the top of my lung, but the problem is, is that that meant that the operation went from being a simple extraction to a full-blown specialist procedure which would leave me forever different. I didn't realise how big it was because, I mean obviously it's surgery, but he didn't know, I didn't know until they went in and then when I was waking up, he came right up and saw me in the middle of the night. Mark said to me, he said, smile. And I, and I was thinking, I don't really want to right now. Like, this is the last thing I want to be doing. And he goes, you need to smile. And I just tried to smile and, and he, Mark looked at me and he goes, the surgery was so serious, we thought you wouldn't be able to smile anymore. They cut facial nerves and he was so worried that I wouldn't be able to smile and scared me so much. But at the same time, I was so happy because I was able to smile. Michael's story is an unfortunate story in as much that his skin cancer got away and spread to his lymph nodes. But it's a good story in as much as that he's been a survivor. And it's an even better story in the fact that Michael's prepared to share it with us. And it's a difficult story for Michael. It's been a degree of heartache for him uh, with melanoma. His father had melanoma. He's recently lost a cousin to melanoma. So if you've got a strong family history of melanoma, a first degree relative who's had melanoma, then you are much more likely to get melanoma yourself and you should have your skin checked. So ever since that big ordeal, I made sure I was very, very vigilant with my skin because I knew this was an issue and it could come back. Mark and I talked about it and Mark said, it's easy, you just book an appointment and you show up and we do the rest come and see us at the Skin Institute. After finding like a mole that my doctor, uh, Karen, who is amazing, uh, she said that, oh, that looks a bit dodgy. Let's, let's take it out to just be safe. You know, we'll have it, we'll, we'll test it. Let's just take it out. I sent off for testing and then uh, came back a couple of weeks later from the lab. Karen said to me, she said, no, look, it is cancerous, but you're lucky we caught it so early that we got a clear enough margin around it that there was absolutely no spread. And it is the perfect place to be in. You said, we got it and nothing's going to happen. The ordeal is not going to happen due to that mole because Karen was on to it. Whip it out and that's it. And that problem avoided and that was great. He's still at risk, in fact, of increased risk of more of those new melanomas appearing and that's why he's getting regular checks from his dermatologist, which is why it's so important for people who've had melanoma to have regular checks so you can pick them up before they spread. The main thing I've learnt from this whole experience is that it could happen to anyone. Life is so, so, so important and your health is so important. Really learnt to be more vigilant and to know that if I've got, I've got my bases covered, then I'm doing the most I can to make sure this doesn't happen again. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I am doing. I'm Michael. A few years ago when I was 27, I had melanoma. I don't want other Kiwis to get it too. Call Skin Institute and book a full body skin cancer consultation. It's quick and easy. Don't leave it to chance.